Oh, my ladies, my ladies, I told you once, I told you twice, I told you a thousand times. Stop falling for the panda bears. All right, we're back at the man cave. I'm your host, Black Irish. Um, you see the video that I have ready and set up for you to watch. You know this guy. If not, this man, young man has some wonderful things to say about some black women, and his message is very powerful and strong. And I'm sure there's a hundred percent truth to it. So, without any further ado, let us roll it. Okay, I haven't been on TikTok for a bit, and um, I noticed everyone was tagging me in that whole Andrew Schultz thing about black women. I'll make a different comment about Andrew Schultz and that little rat. Um. I don't want you to listen to what he's saying, Andrew Schultz. If you're familiar with that, the whole James and Fuha debacle, how they all turned against them, even though Andrew is the one that made the comment. But I'm, you're gonna you're gonna understand why I'm. He's doing all that. But I I want to I want to say something about black women, and um, this was my mother, and I, I. God is my witness right now. May the Lord strike me down if I'm lying. My Anybody that says that, you already know they're lying. Told me and my siblings, when we were young, when we were young kids, before we, like, I remember it was when my older brother started secondary school. It was a big deal. My older brother going off to the big boy school. And my mom sat us down. She said, if you're ever in trouble, if you're ever in trouble out there in the real world, look for a black woman. My mom said this. My mom was raised in this country from the age of six, the UK. She said, look for a black woman. She said, anywhere in the world, a black woman will help you. She was never wrong. She was never wrong. But, like, it's incredible that my mother said that. And I don't know what my mom went through. But I, I remember seeing photos of my mom in school when she was in high school and stuff. And, like, she had loads of uh, black friends and stuff. And they were all black women. Because um, my mom wasn't a pygmy. She only mm. had female friends. And um, she, um, so she obviously felt some protection. And uh, growing up, for me, I noticed in my school... It was a very predominantly white school. The black teachers looked out to me. I had a black Jamaican teacher called Mrs. Forrester. She looked out to me. But even outside of school, when I started growing out my hair, it was a black woman that taught me how to look after my curls, what products to use. It was the, it's, it's black women that built me up on this platform and got me to where I am. I have to give credit to where credit is due. It was women in general, but black women specifically. Who... I see. Did y'all catch that? His biggest fan base are black women. He has a platform built for women. His Indian mother told him that black women are the best thing to him than any other race of women, including his own. Now, he didn't say specifically that, but you don't think it's a little bit odd that his mother didn't say an Indian woman would be the best thing for you, but a black woman? I'm sure this is probably in the UK, but, and you know, things are different over there than they are here. You know, it's a little bit weird that somehow the Andrew Schultz thing kicked in because he mentioned that. And then after that, he decides to bring up the whole thing with like the best thing in your life is a black woman. OK, Boosted just keep me playing. Told me how pretty I was and how great I was. Um, but I, 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 I am trying to make a point here, and it's that black women get treated the worst the worst. Malcolm X said this. He goes, they are, unfortunately, they are treated the worst by the medical field, by the education field. <laughs> he doesn't even know the actual quote that Malcolm X gave when he was speaking about the, Oh, my God. This is, <laughs> this is pandering. Oh, my God. By the police, by everything. Yet yeah, they're the ones that give the most love. And for, like, I, I saw what he said in that post, Andrew Schultz, and, like, some comments and I, it's it's sad and I it hurts my heart when I think of like of those things because I'll tell you right now it wasn't that long ago my friend Jordan who I love and boast about Jordan's got these it, it, Jordan's family is just when I was homeless and Jordan introduced me to his family they treated me like I was one of them they didn't they, they didn't even care they were just like they treat me like family. It didn't feel awkward. You know when you go over to someone's house and you just sat in the corner for a bit? It didn't feel like that. 
And I know not all black people are the same. Obviously, I know that. But there's one thing that black people universally have, and that is that beautiful smile and beautiful love. It's like they just, they, they just give out. My question is, while your mother told you this and you did all this, are you dating a black woman? Since they're so wonderful and great. I'm not trying to downplay it. I'm just asking the question. Are you bringing a black woman to your mother's house after she gave you that comment? I, I would like, I'm just curious to see what your girlfriend looks like. Just out of curiosity. So. He wanted to quote Malcolm X, but didn't actually know exactly what Malcolm X said. But the thing I have, I'm very curious about now, back then, when Malcolm X said that, that actually made a lot of sense. And I understood that. But he's not talking about nowadays, black women. The things that black women are doing to themselves, the image that they are creating themselves. They're going out here, portraying themselves as the jokes that they are making instead of being humble about themselves. Now, let's be honest with ourselves. The whole black it was like black girlfriend effect, and he was making a joke about that. That's not some stereotype that he, Andrew, just made up. They actually made it that way. Their attitudes and how they handle themselves. And when women don't speak up against and say, that's not us, people just generalize you. You can't help people for generalizing when you stay quiet, watching the roughnecks and the hyenas make you look bad. If you don't speak up against it, it's on you. It's not up for me to say, oh, I'm sure she's not like that. No, I'm going to judge you the same way I would judge anyone. If that, if I see too many to do it, I'm going to think you're the same way. You're not, maybe, you ever think maybe that you're not protected or you don't feel that you're protected? You know you are still protected, but you think you maybe you feel that you're not protected because you want to call, quote unquote, your men bullet bags, how they're lame. How every other race of men you uplift and you have to trash talk your own men. You look towards the gangbangers and thugs and the ones in prison. And you've just seen the videos of women who are lusting over men who are in jail. I don't even know if they're really in jail or it's all for show. But you go out here and you pretend that that is what you're attracted to. You want to have fun and you know it's boring if you have a nine to five job, you know, I like a guy that sells drugs and gets in excitement and does exciting things. Women are like children. Modern women are literally like children. Regular women are not like this, but modern women are like children. I want to have fun. When you talk down to your race of men, do you ever think for a split second, maybe this will come back to haunt you? Do you ever think about that at all? No. Because that may be the one of the major reasons why you're in the situation that you're in right now. Just oh, saying. Gosh, thing, but I, I want to I want to say something about black women, and um, this was my mother, and I, I God is my witness right now. May the Lord strike me down if I'm lying. My mother told me and my siblings when we were young, when we were young kids, before we like I remember it was when my older brother started secondary school. It was a big deal. My older brother going off to the big boy school. And my mom sat us down. She said, if you're ever in trouble, if you're ever in trouble out there in the real world, look for a black woman. I guess it's only right message, wrong messaging when John Cannon is talking about hood people shit. But he goes on to pander and, and, and go down the stereotypical, oh, black people built me up, woo de woo, but specifically black women are so great. And the, the trope of black women being superhuman and, and, and super women and having to throw the cape on and bear everybody's burdens and shoulder everybody's heartache and pain and suffrage while they hold you up and build you up and you can always depend on a strong black woman it's mighty funny how he described black women to be these great people yet why didn't he marry one? Oh, because that same mother would frown her nose up and turn her face upside down if you brought home a black woman because we all know how traditional brown people's culture are and how racist they can be to black people. Like, dog, you really could have just, you could have just said, thank you, black women, for all your love and support. 
thank you, Black Man, for all your love and support, because he made a Black Man video, too. It wasn't as in-depth as the Black Woman one, of course, but it was the same premise. His homeboy, Jordan, his family took him in and fed him when he was on the ropes, and Black people are just so opening and welcome to the world, and blah, 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 the same shit we hear from everybody. Stop being so fucking loving. Stop being so accepting of everybody, Black people, because he even said in his own video, his own people aren't what built up his platform. It was Black women or black people and specifically black women that help build this platform as like everything else and people that pop off and become trendy as always off the backs of fucking black people and i'm sure there'll be some well his intent i don't give a damn about his intent because if he had intent he would understand that black women have been fighting for years to rid and be freed from the trope of the superwoman black woman throw on a cake black woman how can we be of service to you everybody so how can you sit here and say you love black women and pander to black women and don't even be uh, 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 conscious and aware of that trope? I, as a black man, fight every day. You ever see when I describe how the, the, the benefits of my wife and why I love my wife? There are never things she does for me, ever. It's always about who she is as a person. Because how often do you hear black men, men, or people, period, get on this app and when they describe the things that their wife, black woman, or the black women in their lives, their mother, their sisters, their women uh, that they're intimately involved with, what do they always do? Acts of service. How she so da -da -da -da, what she does for me. Never about who she is. If you ever in trouble, run to a black woman. <laughs> hey, y'all ate that shit up, boy. God damn. Yeah. It's, it's not wrong. He is not wrong at all. And the problem is, is that too many of them fall for this. They fall for the whole trope, the whole okie doke, the whole, oh, yeah, they, they like us. They like they want to be with us. They do all this other stuff. You feel so deprived of being liked that you will take it from anyone. Doesn't matter who it is. You'll take it from anyone, no matter who it is, because you need to feel welcomed. You need to feel as if you're appreciated. And you are. Because black women are. They just don't like it from the people that they are giving it to them. And that becomes a problem. And you've ignored it for so long that when they started turning their backs on you, you're acting as if this is some nuance. Like you didn't understand why you didn't, you never saw this coming. You didn't see it coming because you chose not to. I hate to break it to you, but that's exactly what happens when you ignore it long enough. People will turn their backs on you and then you start to notice it. But by then, it's too late. Stop listening to people that pander to you and tell you all these lies about how good you are and this and that. Stop being that person. Because what ends up happening, they start thinking that's who you were supposed to be. You need to start realizing and understanding just like everyone else. They're not here to help you and you're not here to help them. And when these people come out here to t who are not black... I'm not, I'm just, I'm not trying to make it races, racial. I'm just calling, making an observation. You're, you're basically showing that you're looking towards anyone to make you feel better. You have it here. You just chose not to accept it. And that is one of the biggest problems that I noticed is you have.